Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Newbrick Workshop and this Workshop Notes video number 31. Now, I've been asked many, many times about how I go about uh, guidebush work uh, using my writer. Now, I've got the Festal OF 1010, this small, beautiful little writer here. And in order to do uh, guidebush work, I've got the UJK threaded guidebush set, which came from Axminster. And these have guide bushes that range from 10 millimeters up to 30. And it goes 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, and 30. This piece in the middle is the retaining ring, which is screwed on the back. I'll show you that now. Now, in order to fit these guide bushes in my writer, you need an adapter. And it just so happens that the Lee Dovetail Jig adapter the 704R is perfect for these guide bushes. That guide bush fits in there perfectly. And I then use this retaining ring at the back to tighten that in place. Tighten it up and that's that now fixed. And this then fits in my writer and I can screw it tight. Now there may be very slightly different ones of these that match your particular writer. So you do need to check that you've got the correct one. Then all I have to do is put this in the writer and screw it in place. Now, if the work that you're doing requires the guide bush to be absolutely concentric with the shaft of the writer, then you can, with this writer, use a mandrill to set it up so it is absolutely perfect. Now, the work I'm about to do does not require that. So I'm just going straight in, tightening that up, and that is now fixed. All I've got to do now is to install my cutter. You may have seen my recent video about this product called Button Fixer, things that look a bit like this. And at the end of that video, I said I might have a look at doing the saw stop arrangement on my capex station. Well, I've actually made a start and I've fixed a pair of buttons onto the underside of this uh, part of the track and that will be fitting here. Uh, I know where the centers of these are, I've marked that, and I've worked out where the dead center of the button should be here. Now on the template that's an optional item with the kit, uh, you'll see for the flush fitting one, uh, this, this part of the template here, there are a couple of lines and that those lines represent the center of the button, whether it's in that position or that position. So uh, that should allow me uh, to put the template in the right place so that I can drill the hole for the actual fixed part of the gadget. Now I've already done one of the holes and you saw me doing this one. I'm now going to just take the template away. I use one clamp and one screw to hold it in place. And I'm going to put the button fix gadget in here now. And that fits in, in my case, with the larger part of the hole facing towards me. Now this is the fun bit. Does it fit or rather is it fitting in the right place? That's it, in position. That's quite reasonably firm. And in theory, uh, I don't think you can quite see it, but that is a dead straight line. Uh, now, this is not quite as firm as it was before, but um, it's, it's certainly firm enough. Yeah, I'm pleased with that, that will work. So it now means when I want to bring the saw all the way around to the 60 degree position, which is all the way around there, and this is the part that was hitting my fence, I can now just remove the fence and I can get this all the way into the 60 degree position with no problem at all. And when I'm then going back to normal, put that back to zero for example, and then I put this back in, push it in, and away I go. Now you may remember that recently I insulated my garage doors uh, using this Supercorp product here. And someone wrote in to me and said, Ah, yes, but when he had to drill through it 
the drill snagged in it and it was almost impossible to get the drill bit out. So I'm just going to do an experiment with this particular product because it may be different from the one that he was using. So in order to do this scientifically, <laughs> I'm going to use four different drills. I've got two brad points, one which is eight millimeters and one which is five. And I've got two ordinary twist drills, one again, eight millimeters, one is five. I'm going to put those through into a block of wood through the material. I'm also uh, going to drive a couple of larger screws through because in my experience, driving a large screw through a hairy substance, uh, you know, whatever it might be, insulation, a blanket, uh, it, then you do get problems with the screw threads catching in the material. So those are the things I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the large brad point. There's my block of wood. I'm going to lay this material over there and do my best to <laughs> drill into it and see what happens. Whoa! Yes! Right! Okay. Yep. Okay. So with that, it was instant. Okay. Let's now try the smaller brad point. Perhaps this will be pretty similar. I'm going to be very careful. Here it goes. Yep, there it is, it does, does catch. So drilling through it with brad point bits is not a good idea. Let's try it with the, the two ordinary bits. Not quite as dramatic, but still it does catch. I could see it catching. Uh, if you look here, you can see how this fibrous layer here has been caught up and it's that which is causing the problem. Yep. So you can't drill through this just in the ordinary way. Now let me check to see if putting a screw in is a problem. A large screw. No, large screws are, are not an issue. So if you had to drill through this for a particular reason. Perhaps there's a big piece of wood behind and you want to attach something solid on this side and you're going to use a big, I don't know, lag bolt or something like that. So you need what's on the far side to be drilled. Maybe this is the way to go about it. There's my material. It's over this piece of wood, which we want to uh, drill into for whatever reason. I'm now going to put some staples near where the cut is going to take place. Now that may seem a bit excessive, but I've now, if you like, isolated that middle section. So let's see what it's like now. Ah, we still get that, that effect. Okay. And there's that material. You can probably see it getting caught up in there. So, another approach. I wonder if this works. Take a piece of metal tubing. This is a piece of eight millimeter brass tubing. And I've put it in the drill press and I have filed it so it's got a sharp edge there. I'm gonna put the other end into a block of wood which I've already drilled an eight millimeter hole in. I'm just gonna push this in a bit. So there it is in my block of wood. I'm now gonna choose my position and I'm going to give this a really hard tap. I'll try and watch my fingers. So I've punched a hole all the way through. I'm not sure this will work or not. So it did work uh, but then when I went in to try and drill it a little bit deeper I did catch some of the material again. Uh, but uh, you can see the idea you could make up something like this, perhaps a bit bigger, maybe use some half inch copper pipe. Now you may recall that when I was making my dining room table and before that uh, desks and loads of other uh, instances, that I've needed really long clamps. And I've had to fall back on the use of my really good Bessie strap clamp. And I've used this for loads of things. It's particularly good for doing box shaped things because you get those little things that go at the corner so you can draw it in all nice and tight. Uh, but for doing long things, like the example with the dining room table, 
it's, it's not perfect. What you need is straight clamps that can be brought up together nice and parallel and so on. And that was the problem I faced making that table. Well, I've bitten the bullet and I've now got a pair of these. These are extenders uh, for the normal K-body type clamps. Now, they're about £25 each, but if it saves you buying a pair of extra long clamps, uh, then it's well worth it. Particularly if you're like me and you only need those extra long clamps, you know, one or two times a year. Now, this is the KRV150. It's a pretty long clamp. It's one meter fifty long and it's got this removable end. There's a little button on top here. You push down on there and it allows you to remove the stop end. So I've got something which is a meter and a half long. My dining room table, just to remind you, was 2.2 meters long. Now I'm just going to move this down this way a bit and also move that out of the way. Here is a more normal uh, Bessie clamp. The plastic end comes off fairly easily. Tug it like so and away it comes. And that's that removed. So I've exposed that end. And then the next thing I need to do is to remove the clamping handle bit. And that's done very easily. Just withdrawing it all the way past the end. And so I've taken that off. I'm going to put that to one side. And the trick now is to join these two together using the clamping extension piece. Now if you look at the extender there are three holes. We're only going to be using two of them. The holes are designed for the bolts and these will be lined up with the holes at each end of our clamps. And if you look at the shape of this end you can see it's the same profile as the clamp shaft itself. And you'll see that this can feed on there like so. And now I'm going to feed the other one in from this end. And I'm going to then line up a pair of holes. There's one here. And the other hole is just there. Okay, so that's that bit done. What I think you can now see, we've got a, a fairly long clamp. And there's just one other element. When you buy a K-body, you'll find it comes with one of these. And the idea of this is, is that if you're clamping something all the way across here, and when you tighten it up, sometimes you get a little bit of bowing in the clamp. Well, you can put one of those there, one of those there, say, uh, and then as you tighten up, uh, this will come up against uh, your uh, desk or, or dining room table, whatever it might be, and that will stop this rubbing against it. And now you just use this elongated clamp in the normal way. I haven't tightened those bolts up as I should, but I think you can get the picture. And I'll take this to the end here, and I now have a clamping capacity of... I just slip that over the end, which means I can get my tape rule there. I think up to 2 meters 60. Now to buy a 2,500 Bessie clamp, I don't know if they go up to that size, but they're quite expensive. So for £25 uh, each, uh, this is a pretty good way of going about it. Now the videos I've got hopefully coming up in the not too distant future Ages ago, I started work on a video about making templates for your router. And this involves a CNC, so it will be a CNC-dominated video. Uh, but it's how to make router templates. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>